Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll admit, the decision as to whether or not these particular developers should end up on the dirty devs list was a difficult one for me to make, but inevitably I decided to spare them that title as undeserving for a couple of reasons that we'll get into after we run through the facts of this situation. Also, I've been still having a lot of people commenting that my preambles are way too long and I end up repeating information as a result, so I will be looking for ways to shorten that and make my videos more palatable for people on that score. So let's jump straight into the facts and then I'll give you all my take on things. Links to any sources used along with links to my social media, Discord, and Patreon are in the description down below. So here is what we know. Now we have the game itself, Depth of Extinction. It is advertised as a hybridization between FTL and the original XCOM. Now the game was originally released in beta on the site itch.io, which is a very common practice where when people buy the game on itch.io in beta, they're also promised typically a Steam key for the game when it launches on that platform. Such is the case with the Steam user Ryan Darkowski, who bought the game on itch.io and received a Steam key for the game all above board and all very standard. Ryan Darkowski then played the game and found that he didn't really care for it and left what seemed to be at face value to be a negative but ultimately very constructive user review on the game. Now, in response to this negative critique, the developers revoked Ryan Dorkowski's Steam key for the game. Now, bear in mind, this was not a review code for the game. It wasn't a free key. It was part of the purchase made by Ryan Dorkowski. Now, how this works is the developers generate beta keys for the game that they then provide manually to those that purchase the game on itch.io. As no other keys were revoked, this means that the developers kept careful records of what keys were generated and provided to their customers, which is normally a smart thing to do. Then on October 5th, Ryan Dorkowski posted a statement on the game's Steam discussion thread, which he updated as events unfolded. Now in that statement, Ryan discussed how the beta key was provided to him via his itch.io purchase and asked the question as to whether or not the Steam key was revoked as a result of his negative critique. He then later edited the post with a copy paste of an email he received from the developers in which they stated, sorry about that, but I thought you weren't interested in playing the game. And also stating that a new key could be provided if Ryan were interested in playing the game more and providing feedback. Now to this email, Ryan rightfully responded that he still required the key he had paid for and that feedback was not a requirement of the purchase of the game. Ryan then further updated his post stating the developers had provided a new key for the game and then followed that up with an apology which was accepted by Ryan. The developers then commented on the thread stating they screwed up, apologized, and fixed the issue. The developers then stated, quote, locking this thread but leaving it up as a testament to Ryan's understanding and character. And there we have it. And before I started recording this, I was very much of two minds regarding whether or not these developers deserved to be added to the already too long list of dirty devs. The reason why they nearly ended up on this list should be fairly obvious. In the face of what appeared to be fairly constructive criticism, the developers still acted like pissy little children throwing a temper tantrum and revoked a key that was paid for in good faith. Also, when initially confronted about their exceptionally bad behavior, the developers continued to act in a deplorable manner by figuratively stating, hey, you said the game sucks, so why would you even want to play it anymore? Now, let me be clear. Regardless of whether Ryan accepted their apology, that behavior and their actions were completely unacceptable and exceptionally unprofessional. These developers who are attempting to sell a product on a professional storefront instead of acting like adults decided to simply shit the bed at the first sign of negative critique. They acted like two-year-olds who hadn't had their nap, and frankly, who would even want to buy the game now anyways? If you don't like it, would this behavior possibly prevent someone from posting their own user review out of fear that the developers would revoke the key that they paid for? That is bullying, not to mention disgusting, and it should never be allowed or tolerated for any reason whatsoever. But at the same time, do they end up on the Dirty Dev series? No. By the skin of their teeth, no. The reason for that is that yes, they initially doubled down, but they did come to their senses, issued a new Steam key to the affected user, and apologized. Then they did not delete the discussion thread or flag his review or issue death threats or do anything else vitriolic or nasty which is the typical hallmark of the dirty dev. When I was considering this, I was reminded of Hanlon's razor. Never attribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity. And in this case, what we have is evidence not of a developer acting maliciously, but of a developer that is very, 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 very stupid. 
At the same time though, these questions do have to be asked. Could this be seen as review manipulation? No, not really. These developers were butthurt about the negative review and wanted feedback so they could improve their game before a negative review was posted. Never once did they attempt to coerce or push for a positive critique of the game, although they did maintain unrealistic expectations. Can the developers be trusted? No, absolutely not. They have still shown themselves to be completely incapable of rationally handling negative critique and as such, their mentalities and their experience are not adequate for a professional environment. Everyone gets negative critique, especially game developers. Being a successful game developer also requires that thick skin that these developers have proven they simply do not possess. Can they regain any trust? I think so. Given enough time and maintaining the right type of attitude, I think they will survive this, but now they've placed themselves in a precarious position where even a minor hint of wrongdoing can and most likely will bring down the wrath of their customers down around their ears. And I have to say, I would still recommend avoiding this game even if none of this were to happen. Ryan's review was not only exceptionally well written for a user review, he was absolutely 100% correct. The game will grow to be exceptionally tedious over time and it simply doesn't have the charm of FTL that they're so obviously trying to capture within an XCOM style 8-bit game. Also, this is not a $20 game, which is the deciding factor for me. If this were a $10 game, I would probably be singing its praises and saying that the game was worthwhile, but be aware that these developers have shown that they might not be trustworthy. At the $20 price point, we get into levels of expectation that this game just isn't up to providing, and as such, regardless of anything else, I would recommend giving the game a pass until it came down to that $10 price point. And even then, I would still say be wary, because like I said, these developers have shown that they are incapable of handling critique in a rational manner. They came to their senses, which is more than what could be said for anyone on the dirty devs list, but only just barely. But as always, please do let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.